Millions of peaches, peaches for me. Welcome into the Creed of Crypto live stream. How you doing? I am Broke Boy Crypto. I have here with me, as always, my friend and co-host, Crypto Ewok. Welcome in, everybody. We got people pouring into the chat tonight. We got Rebel Yell. I'm uh, not really looking. I get uh, that's about it so far. I guess we're getting people starting to pour in right now. So I'm sure DJ Moon Boy is going to be here and a lot more. Uh, we got Scrubhead coming in. I think we got to take a break with Jake already. Maybe watching in the background. So welcome in everybody. We got a big show for you tonight. And we're going to talk about once again these memes on Pulse Chain and especially the ones that are promoted by the Tang Gang, the HOA Gang. We're going to talk about those tonight because those they're just. They're dominating the chain right now. Every time these guys release one, um, we just had, of course, Peach, the newest one, just come out the other night, and uh, it's done many Xs already. So we're, we're going to talk about that, that network effect, and how maybe one could play those in the optimum way. And uh, you know, if they're making too many of them, people have talked about the dilution effect as well. So we'll talk about that. We're going to talk about the Ethereum ETF, if and when we're going to get it, and why if Ethereum continues just to perform like, basically dog dung against Bitcoin. Uh, we got stuff going on with Trump and crypto. We've got the Manect initiative with Gary, Rag, some other people within the Pulse Chain community. Huge updates to 9-inch uh, and a lot more. We're going to get to all that stuff. So hope you guys are all good. Ewok, how are you feeling this evening? Feeling good. I'm um, seeing some green candles. Uh, definitely helps the mood of, of yep. all people. And, you know, it's funny. I've been I don't want to say taking a break, just kind of hiding in the shadows. I don't really ever say a whole lot on Twitter or X. I would kind of lurk in the background and just to try and get a, a pulse of, of what's going on and 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 see. Um, but, you know, it's been nice. It's been nice to kind of just step back and not really look at it too much. Get away from things. We know things are going to be sideways market here for probably a few months. Uh, so it, it, it's good to take that mental, mental break. And it's you know, definitely re rewarding to to not be self absorbed into a lot of that drama that you see. Uh, you know, the fighting between the different groups. We're going to talk about the different groups and how everybody's kind of got their own thing going on, but they always battle back and forth. It it, it definitely creates some interesting uh, topics for discussion. So, but yeah, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Yeah, and I think what you just said kind of will lead us into what the market is doing overall right now, because I agree with you. It feels like, um, you know, we may be gearing up for the normal Bitcoin cycle, the right translated cycle, as we would say. A lot of people were fearing a left translated one and the things were going to happen too quick and not go high enough this year. But now, time frame wise, things seem to be settling down a little bit. And that's why I think you and I are both finding this time right now in this lull a little bit more palatable because it's like, well, now we're starting to feel more confident that the payoff may be there. There is, you know, something at the end of the rainbow, so to speak. Uh, and it'll, you know, come at the time that we typically expect, hopefully. So uh, I'm with you there. Just shouting out the poll question real quick. When it comes to meme coins, and again, we're talking about the epic ones that are performing on Pulse Chain right now. What percentage of your portfolio is dedicated to meme coins? Do you have 5% or less? So just a couple of flyers, basically, in your portfolio. Are you at 10 to 20%? So you have a bag that is, is probably growing in size. Maybe you didn't intend for it to be 20%, but it's becoming that way because they're all just performing so well. Or are you in the true degen, 20 to 50%, you're confident, you're okay with the risk, you don't mind that, and you think they're going to take off this cycle. So we'd love to hear you guys' thoughts on that. And yeah, let's talk about Bitcoin. So Bitcoin sits right now at what, 66K? Um, so it's it's come back up uh, somewhat significantly. I didn't even realize that. 8% in the last day. ETH yeah. now back over, over 3K. But again, ETH still struggling against Bitcoin. So... Let's talk about that quick thing that um, we can look at Bitcoin in the short term, Ewok, but also with the cycles. Um, I know everybody here loves Bob Lucas. He was kind of talking the other day about how things are starting to settle down. And while he did slightly maybe favor a left translated cycle before, now the things are mellowing out, settling down, maybe just a normal cycle like we're more accustomed with to BTC. So, um, yeah, what, what do you make of this? And I, I, I like me, I'm sure you're hoping for a regular time frame here. Well, yeah, I I have not been a favor of the left translated cycle. I I haven't thought that yet. I mean, there was a lot of things that really needed to happen first before mm -hmm. I would have been swayed in that direction. I thought things would, you know, just be a normal cycle. 
where you know we are seeing it the having happened um we're seeing some sideways uh growth and you know you get a couple of these little green candles like i said this one here just to the today's candle um is up quite considerably it's it's a nice little what is that eight percent i was just that's what i saw earlier yeah, yeah seven or eight percent yeah eight percent today seven and a half ish um but yeah it's you know it's doing the thing i don't think we're gonna pass this you know 71 72 thousand area and it's it'll be tight to go up past this 67 three you know, if it makes a, a higher low, then, you know, look out. It could go even further, but I don't think it's going to. I think we're going to, I think we're going to play around in this channel, you know, between probably 70 and 57 for a little while before it pulls back down. And then we'll get a, then we'll get a nice, nice rally. But yeah, I mean, they're showing strength. I think a lot of that, again, has to do with the, the market manipulation of the the bigger players, the Black Rocks that are involved, the ETFs, things like that. People are moving some money. Uh, there's a lot of things in the, you know, the financial side, the traditional FI uh, side of things that could be causing this too. So yeah, I mean, it's again, I I just think we're gonna play around in this channel. We're gonna get it's gonna be a little boring for a little while, uh, mm -hmm. probably couple more months you know we, i just i don't think it's going to break the all-time high unless something crazy happens but just a lot of sideways channel movement i agree with you i think bitcoin just ran up too high at the beginning of the year we always talk about how well it did in that first quarter you know probably prompted by the etf so i, I do think we'll see bitcoin continue to kind of just chop around and pull back and stay likely in that channel too um you know we had some good insights from axis alive last week when he was on our show yeah just about how you know and we, we've already been talking about how we may need to be a bit more patient in this cycle here and he gave some good insights about that i mean for a long time he's been espousing this idea of like you know potentially going into 2026 actually slightly for this cycle like by spring of 2026 topping out and i don't know that that will happen but i mean i think we do need to start getting more comfortable luckily with the idea of a regular cycle now just because we are seeing things pull back we're seeing ethereum do nothing kind of transitioning into that so i mean ethereum um and I, here's the thing I, I guess you can look at it that way and say that ethereum is doing nothing or performing badly against btc it's even pulled back over the last week it's down the ratio is down to like 0.45 or something right now so it's as bad as it has been in quite some time um but I, I think it's more so a result of how well BTC has performed. I don't think it's that Ethereum itself has been doing so badly. I mean, I get you, you can look at it either way, I guess. It's a ratio. But no one really expected Bitcoin to hit an all-time high in the first quarter of 2024. I mean, you know, it, it was pretty clear that it was spurned by the ETF approvals and stuff like that. Uh, you know, what? Who, who knows what else was involved with that. But I think that's the reason we're seeing Ethereum perform so badly. And then on the other side of it, we have we have the uh, Ethereum ETF approvals pending. There's one supposedly this month. There's one coming in August. Pretty much everybody feels that it's a guarantee that they'll get rejected this month. I'm sure it will uh, by the SEC. This is literally exactly how it's going to go. And I know you know this as well as I do, Ewok. They're going to um, deny the ETH ETF in May. Uh, right. We're going. Maybe we'll see it bleed even a little bit more. So Gary and everybody in the SEC and whoever else in the government can load up their pockets and it'll <laughs> get approved in August. I think. I, I think that's what we're starting to see a timeline for. What What do you make of that? Yeah, I'm just seeing how. I'm just trying to draw some channels here where this or how long this could really chop out for. Um, and it mm -hmm. does kind of play into if it if it stays within this channel for that long until it kind of comes to a point. You know, you are looking at the end of July, August area. If we get continuation on, on this this channel movement, um, yeah, I, I agree totally. I think the the one this month will get denied. Um, it will give them time to fill up their bags and all their friends and everything like that before they yeah. actually say, "Okay, let's do it." And then you know, it, you're going to see a run up. It, it's 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 going to be you know pretty epic i think uh, so you know it may not be a bad idea to to fill up your ethereum bags you know again you should always watch what people do not what they say 
Um, and, and if you can find some people like, you know, I think JP Morgan, they have some public, publicly known wallets, some of the bigger um, entities that are out there, there's a way to look them up. Um, I, I forget. I'm sure if you Google JP Morgan's Ethereum address, you'll find something. You right. know, take a look, see what they're doing. Go to Etherscan and, and see if they are buying and, and see, you know, some of the larger things that are happening. Um, I think you'll find that they probably are. Uh, be a good sign for you to probably load up on some of it as well. Um, if you have Hex, especially, uh, that's still on the Ethereum chain, it may be a good idea to get it while it, you can um, and, you know, save it for some of those fees that you may need to have later for when your stuff comes ready to unstake and uh, the market may not be as favorable. The, the gas prices may not be five like they are. You know yeah. what I mean? Right. Um, I haven't looked today to see what they are, but five. Um, I know it was, right was it five. Okay. Four it's or five been, right now. Yep. It's been even down to three uh, mm -hmm. at one point. So it, quite favorable. Um, I, I would love to think that Pulse Chain has something to do with that. You know, it was always mm -hmm. part yeah. of the goal, right? You know, to, to, relieve some of those fees by moving some of the things over. I, I don't think that's the case right now. I think it's just kind of the the boredom in the markets that are that, that are causing it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I can see us chopping around in this channel until it's time to really break out from it. Um, and again, it could be, you know, extended a little bit into August. Uh, but, you know, when they give that green light, it, it's going to be a very similar situation to what Bitcoin was. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. When did that get approved? Do you remember the date? Oh boy, I don't even remember now. Um, was it like March or something? Um, yeah, I think it was. I think there was a pre notion people started to know about it back in you know, this is what February seventh, eighth, um, and it really oh, actually ran it says up. January. I guess it was says it? January actually. Was it January? Um, yeah, I guess so. I mean, I guess maybe there was just, uh, you know, a bigger move of Bitcoin's price after that, but it says January, yeah. Okay, I well, know. I mean, that would be the, the bottom of everything kind of right here is January 22nd, so right. <clears throat> I don't know the date, but it you could see a, a substantial run-up when, when that happens for Ethereum. So, again, watch what people are doing, not really what they're saying, uh, even though they're denying it now. It's probably because they're they're filling up their bags. So just be, yeah. be cautious and... Uh, use your DCA skills to, to get in. Yeah. I think that's what we're seeing. Um, yeah. I think that's definitely how they're going to play it. And we'll just have to be patient on that. But yeah, I, for everybody that's still, you know, um, really crapping on ETH and thinking that it's dead and not get, I don't, anybody saying that at this point is just somebody who is a Bitcoin maxi and kind of has that, you know, I don't know what you would say the Trump derangement syndrome is for somebody who mm -hmm. thinks like, um, you know, orange coin good, maybe. I don't know yeah. what you would say for Bitcoin maxis, but they, I mean, they genuinely want everything else to die. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't pay much attention to any of that, that rhetoric, yeah. but, yeah. um, Looking at Pulse Chain, though, so let's turn our attention to our ecosystem. This is very odd because during our stream, we usually have a dip. We actually have a little wee bit of a pump right now. So uh, a modest one, maybe a pump for ants, as some may say. But we do have uh, Pulse itself sitting at 40% below SAC rate, four zeros and a six. We got Pulse X still down 74-ish percent from the SAC rate. Incentive token sits at 321. Hex is at nine tenths of a penny. And EHEX at about uh, two tenths of a penny, a little below, to basically where it's been for a long time. Uh, but it is it, it, EHEX has been moving up a lot, though. So um, yeah, interesting to see where we're at. We're having a little bit of upwards movement, and um, you know, you and I were discussing, I think, with a certain DJ Moon Boy. I think it was this past Friday morning. Um, he was messaging with us back and forth about like, hey, the markets are starting to pump. I think like, you know, we're leaving this area right now. I Forgive me. I don't remember the exact words, but like it feels like we're, you know, coiling up to move up basically. And uh, that this little period of being down is over. And then we started to see it dip like right after that pretty much. So um, right. we've been hanging out in this zone, though. I mean, I think it's kind of what his point was. Like we have been here a while. I do agree that it has felt good that we've consolidated right here for a while and it's getting me more confident that there's not going to be much more downside. Um, wh what do you think about that, Ewok, if you want to bring up the pulse chart? Because um, I, I think us hanging out here as long as we have for a few weeks now 
it is, you know, hopefully meaning we're going to start heading up here soon. So what do you make of that? Yeah, let's pull it up here. I, this crazy candle at the very beginning of this chart drives me nuts. So you got to go past Kinda it. So jacks you can, it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you can actually get some some um, charting out of it. Yeah. Where's it at? There we go. Yeah. Um, this was our line. This was our the line that we were following. Nice, steady um, rise in price, everything like that. Um, and then it broke through it. I, I think, you know, we're looking at if we can get back through, I, I guess it would be anywhere right in here. It's going to be like 0 0.7, 0 0.8 till it, till it can probably rise or mm -hmm. the, you know, the four zero four zeros in a seven, um, five, six, somewhere in that vicinity. I'm thinking, you know, by the end of this month, probably, if we can break through that, because I think it's going to be resistance for us now that, you know, it, it's kind of hung out below it. We may tap it a couple times. I hope, um, I hope we can, hope we can bust through it and then go on to, to bigger, better things. But yeah, I mean, again, it's, it's still, it's still looking healthy. You know, we haven't made lower lows at least. So, you know, that's a good thing to look at. There are several lower lows down here. Uh, that it seems yeah. to definitely keep bouncing off of that 0. 0.5, uh, th four zeros and a five has definitely been um, a strength of it where it, it touches it and it boom bounces right back up. So, yeah, you know, there's definitely things defending it, at least at that price, which was what half the sack rate. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it, it's looking strong. And, and, and again, these things are, are going to take some time. There are so many things happening right now. Um, where this whole chain is growing, it's developing, it's, you know, it, it's not your traditional release a coin and this all community goes crazy kind of thing for something new to take off. Right. It is starting from scratch on a whole layer one with all these protocols, with all these coins, with all these meme coins. There's so many things happening right now. Um that it's got to settle. It's, it, you know, it's got to find a good place to start um, uh, until things can, can really get wild. And I honestly think that's what you're watching and witnessing right now. Yeah, I think so too. And, um, you know, good news that I did note down and forgot is we did just actually have the first green weekly close in eight weeks. So, yeah. or yeah, in nine weeks, it was the first green weekly close. So that, Maybe the start of uh, a good sign. And I agree with you. Yeah, this isn't um, like a, you know, get out of jail right now and just start moonshotting. I mean, I think it's going to be, you know, a slow process here. But that that's why you can kind of take some solace in the fact that like, yeah, well, you can be like, well, we, we <clears> pumped <throat> in March and stuff like that. And Pulse Chain really hasn't pumped as much as a lot of other things and blah, blah, blah. Well, the whole market's really come down from those pumps that happened back then. And now that we're really considering this longer time frame and a right translated cycle going deep into 2025, you know, it gives me a little bit more comfort, um, you know, feeling like things aren't going to have to happen so quickly that it's like, hey, more more time to DCA, more time to be, you know, if you want to stake Hex, if you want to be liquidity providing with Pulse Chain and Pulse X or one of the other pools or something, Um more time to, to earn things and more time, you know, if you want to take chances here and there with small amounts on some of the meme tokens that we're about to discuss to try to increase your bags because there is there is ample opportunity to be doing that right now. Like, I don't think that anybody, you know, at this rate, if you want to complain, that's fine. I don't think you have any reason to be complaining if you're in this ecosystem with all of these things popping off, like all these opportunities right now, whether if you don't want to buy peach or nanana nanana whatever or <laughs> some of the other tangan coins if you don't want to do that that's fine there's other things that you can do but i'm not saying that you have to buy them and hold on for dear life and you hold them throughout the whole bull market there's other things that you can do by taking advantage of some of these opportunities so yeah. um i just think there's a lot going on right now and if, if people are upset then they need to maybe get out of their comfort zone a little bit you know right so yep yep i agree yeah but Things are starting to turn around, uh, looking pretty good. Um, we're going to get to more Pulse Chain stuff, obviously, here. And uh, we, have, we have a lot of stuff in store tonight. So if you guys are enjoying the stream so far, do us a favor. Hit the like button. We appreciate all of you being here tonight. We do this every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, I, I just keep trying to decide the best place to go because we have so much going on uh, tonight. So 
Um, let's flip, hit on flip a coin. Go. Flip okay. a coin. L let's go. Let's go <laughs> to this Manect initiative. Actually, I think this is a good mm -hmm. idea because we we should cover it. So, um, the big thing is outreach. Like a lot of people, like within Paul's chain, if you're talking about like I want this to grow, I want other communities to be aware of it. You know, how do we extend a hand? Um, I don't think the way to do it is just by some of these people on Twitter just like shitting on Solana or AVAX or Phantom all the time and saying, well, Pulse Chain never goes down. I mean, you know, that's fine. Like, I, I understand some of that, but I think there has to be like some actual good outreach and just using Twitter really isn't the always the best way to do that. So we've had this effort, which is just phenomenal by Gary Woods, funding Jim, who has done, you know, so much for Pulse Chain and is the bridger of all bridgers he's out there like with real business guys all the time making connections and things like that and then rags to riches of course brandon him those two went down to mar-a-lago and i know oh i know b roots was there too i mean they weren't all there as a group but i know b roots and ian were both there they've been there before as well uh gary's been there before i believe too but they were at mar-a-lago trump had one of his like rallies there and stuff like that lots of good um you know crypto rhetoric came out of trump from there that we'll get to as well but more importantly, so the, what you know, you may be for the first time hearing about what Manect is. So, if you're familiar with Patrick Bet David and Valuetainment and the podcast, the companies that he owns, I'm not going to pretend that I know the entire brand that he has, but I, I'm aware of the PBD podcast and the guys that are on there and stuff like that. But they basically invented an app called Manect, which is a way to um, basically you can send, I th you can request like an audio or a video. Uh, question to be answered from like anybody who do, decides to sign up with it. So like Tulsi Gabbard's on there. She's been high in the standings in this little perf um, contest that PBD has been running with Manact that goes through the end of May. Rags to Riches is on there. Gary's on there. KG from Internet Money Wallet. I, last I looked was about to take over the number one spot. He actually overtook <clears throat> Rags to Riches and Gary on there. Yeah. So there's this contest going on. It's a great incentive from PBD. If you win it, I think that there's like a dinner. You actually sit with PBD if you win it. Either way, it, it's a fantastic way to broadcast your message and get yourself known because you're getting people that are reaching out to you for answers. So um, this is just all great. Like, so they're down in Mar-a-Lago. They're, they're participating in the Manect app. Um, what do you make of all this? And what are your thoughts on Manect? Because when I hear about it and what it can do, it's reminding me of when, do you remember Clubhouse? Do you remember the I app? Do. Called... Okay. I do. Yeah. So that basically went belly up because Twitter spaces just kind of like replaced it. Like, yeah. you know, it's yeah. just like, why, why would I go to Clubhouse if there's Twitter spaces? This is not that. This is almost like if you guys are familiar with, um, uh, oh shit. What's the thing where you can, um, request somebody to send you like a birthday message or whatever. Oh, are those are the, um, um, it starts with a C I think, and I can't remember what it is. But basically, you, you can I know like, what you're like, talking about. Yeah, yeah. There'd be like different celebrities on there. Somebody will probably shout it out in the chat. But like the celebrities on there, you could be like, "Hey, I want to pay five thousand dollars for Taylor Swift to wish a happy birthday to my friend or whatever." Or it could be some like bum old Major League Baseball manager that will do it for twenty bucks. Or I mean, right, you know, right. you could you could do whatever you want. Um, but it's kind of like that, except there's more value in it. You're you're actually able to um, get them to answer a, a question that you may want to have answered, and you know they set their own prices for it. So exactly, yeah. So yeah, what do you make of this whole thing? You've got the leaderboard up, which is awesome. What do you make of these efforts, the Mar-a-Lago trip, all this stuff from these guys? Because this is just great for outreach. I think. Well, it's funny because you know there for a while, Tulsi Gabbard was in the lead. Yeah. Um, she has fallen out like right now. Totally. She's looks like she's at still at a hundred, which I thought she was over a hundred. I thought she had like 130. I'm not sure what happened there. This, um, uh, Santino guy has stepped in and took the first place over, but, uh, rags who was Brandon Davis, he was in second place or third place. Um, KG took that over. So he's got 135 rags got, 134 and then you know um funding jim gary has 119 so yep. all of these guys are doing extremely well i mean if they could make a little run at this and i know rags to riches said um yes cameo that's right yeah um R rags had said he had like 15 or 20 sitting in his queue um so mm -hmm. 
it looks like he has a chance to it, it's going to be great it, it, it's a great thing for especially these guys um that know patrick bet david and um a lot of those guys are big investors right they've got some some heavy wallets and um, it would be very cool to to get them in front of some of these guys talking about pulse chain talking about uh, the the new things that are happening and the the growing network effect, and they don't mind taking a chance with some of their money. Um, it, it's what kind of what they do. So, you know, I know Gary networks with a lot of those guys already. You know, he's in good with the um, um, Kiyosaki group as well. Oh, yeah. um, so he spends a lot of time with with those guys and the the real estate group of it. I forget what the guy's name is. Um, <clears throat> on the on the real estate side, uh, that handles a lot of the the Kiyosaki Group stuff. But either way, it, it's fantastic. It's a good way for these guys to you know get get their word out there um, in front of some some heavy hitters, and I, I think it's awesome. You know, it, it's it's going to be some. We'll, we'll see how it works, but yeah, the word of mouth and the the rubbing elbows and the the talking to these guys. Um, I think it's going to have a very positive effect. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, and this event at Mar-a-Lago was great too. And it, you know, this made waves with like other crypto news, of course. Yeah. But um, you know, Trump was directly asked. I, maybe I'm making this up. I, I feel like it was some dude affiliated with Polygon Matic or something like that. But somebody asked him specifically about crypto, and he gave his like kind of stock answer, clearly showing he doesn't really know all that much, which I don't even expect them to. But frankly, I mean, you're just hoping that there is a candidate out there that doesn't actively try to hurt the industry and totally drive it away from the United States, which is what um, basically most of the left is doing, you know? Um, well, if you heard his comment, what he actually said was, listen, I'm all in favor for it. I want it to be safe. Uh, but as long as it's safe, I'm in favor of it. And I'm not against it. Uh, which is kind of the, the perfect answer. You know, he's, we, we don't somewhat want someone that's totally, well, I, I, I guess we probably do want someone that's totally pro crypto and uh, let's right. change the, the, the world economy over. To They're crypto. not getting elected though. They're, dead. <laughs> They're not getting he's, elected. His name exactly. was John McAfee. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. guys like that are yeah. not going to get elected, but yeah. you know, to, to, to take his position and his stand on it to say, listen, I'm in favor of it as long as it's safe. Uh, let's get some guidelines. Let's let's make it that way and um, and, and have fun. You know that's that's what we want to hear. We don't want to hear all these rulings about how they're going to um, start punishing people for unrealized capital gains and all oh, these dude. other yeah. crazy things with the KYC out your ass and um, it, it, you know it's it's getting it's getting crazy and we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit too and. Uh, some of the things that are happening in the EU. Yeah. You know what? That may be a perfect transition, actually. Um, How about yes. that? Yeah, that was perfect. I, ha I actually have that note right below. Almost like topic. I did that on purpose. Almost like you did, yeah. Um, so, yeah, hey, shout out in the chat. If you guys want to say who you're voting for, Biden, Trump, uh, I guess Kennedy, you can put on there too. Um, <laughs> we know how that always turns out with a third party, though. He'll probably end up getting like 2% of the popular vote, and, you know, yeah. that's how it'll go. Um, but, yeah, good to see that stuff from Trump. I mean, it, or... And I tend to believe him a little bit more than I would like a standard lifelong Republican politician. Like, honestly, when I was hearing stuff from DeSantis, I was like, I don't know how much I really believe of what you're saying. You know, um, not that Trump is a, a perpetual truth teller either or anything. But either way, we, we're just hope we just want an establishment that isn't actively trying to hurt this industry. <laughs> that, that's right. all we're really asking for. You, you can be neutral to, uh, you know, ignore it. We don't really care. Um yeah. So, hey, good transition by you. Yeah. So this is back to the whole uh, hashtag Richard Hart was right thing. So and, and you know, the, the guy playing 4D chess and, you know, this is where people get annoyed by followers of Richard Hart because it's like, why do you guys praise him so much? And one of, this may be one of the reasons why. So um, there are new EU proposed crypto and DeFi regulations on the horizon. And actually, I will. Um, let me copy the actual article and I'm going to send it to you, Ewok, if you want to share it on your screen. It's up to you. But I'm looking at something from Cointelegraph. Uh, it says DeFi may struggle to stay decentralized, <laughs> which is funny, after new EU law. 
It says DeFi's exemption from MICA regulation may fade as an update target protocols with centralized components. The sector could split between hybrid and DeFi models. Let me get to that wasn't really part of the article. Um, new regulations in the European Union may soon force decentralized finance protocols to make tough decisions. At the heart of the issue is the tendency of many DeFi protocols to have centralized front ends and e intermediaries. The EU's markets and crypto assets regulation, which will come into full force by the end of 2024. Luckily, we don't have that here will require DeFi protocols to adhere to the same licensing as know your customer requirements as traditional financial services firms, a burden many DeFi protocols may be unable and unwilling to bear. Yeah, because it isn't DeFi. Um, yeah. According to MakerDAO co-founder Rune Christensen, only full decentralized local downloaded front ends or full KYC online front ends would be possible. All right. So listen to that first part. Only fully decentralized local downloaded front ends uh which we happen to have in pulse chain uh, imagine that yeah um it says this leaves DeFi protocols with a choice either pivot to a somewhat centralized hybrid finance hi-fi they call it uh model to comply with eu regulations or decentralize entirely i think we've done one of those two things um it says true DeFi is exempt from MICA within the actual EU regulation. Fully decentralized protocols are exempt from falling into the MICA requirements, as mentioned in Recital 22, where crypto asset services are provided in a fully decentralized manner without any intermediary. They should not fall within the scope of this regulation. So that pretty much lays it out. I'm not going to read the rest of it. I don't think there's much point. This is just the EU. This isn't the United States. But for now, very interesting that one Richard Hart just a mere months ago to, um, you know, most people didn't care. A couple few uh, complained about it. If we want to name them, we can. Although if you pay any attention, you may know who they are. Um, but basically Pulse Chain, I won't say it was Richard Hart, but someone within Pulse Chain decided to provide IPFS links, um, making this basically locally run. You could also download each and every one of the programs, the bridge, um, Pulse X, the Dex, you can, and, and that's what I've done. That's the only way that I've used them. I think you're the same way, Ewok. It's the only way I've used them now for months. I download it locally on my PC and run it from there. You're not even connected to the internet at that point. You're just running it locally. Um, right here, even in this, you know, potential deal from the EU, they are citing that that would be true decentralization and that it would be exempt from this stuff. So did Richard Hart see this stuff coming down the pike? Um, you know, he, those changes were made when we were at enormous red candles and everybody was already in a negative mood anyway. But I think this is awesome. It's like two extra clicks. That's what a lot of us were saying all along to be able to use this in true decentralized fashion. So, yeah, what do you make of these potential rulings from the EU and um, the fact that Pulse Chain has already uh, passed it? I think it's, uh, you know, I, I think it's a testament to Richard being, again, two or three steps ahead. Um, he probably heard about this coming. Um, he, you know, the man does a lot of research. He knows a lot of things. Um, and he's always thinking chess moves, right? How many steps ahead can I be um, and figure this out before it becomes a problem? And he did precisely that, you know. Um, the the So I don't know. It goes on to say something here about... Um, smart contracts that are used in the provision of a crypto asset service are in themselves not even suitable to create the appearance of exclusive decentralization which is a a weird statement you know i don't understand mm -hmm. you know it, it says one thing up here uh where you know it says fully decentralized um protocols are exempt but then it goes down to here and so smart contracts aren't suitable. So, you know, they're kind of, they're doing what <clears throat> Gary does and talks right. in circles a little bit. So I don't think they have completely decided. Um, but again, it's, it, it goes, you know, the moral of the story is this is testament to why Richard's done the things he's done. Um, mm -hmm. And yes, the, the Karens out there who complained about it, um, the gold ones, especially. the silver, I was gonna say the silver Karens, the gold Karens, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, 
there's a reason for it, guys. And, you know, he, he took care of that whole thing because now you can download it, run it locally on your machine and not need any of this stuff. So um, just uh, I, su such a smart play. Uh, you know, I'm always impressed. You, you know, I, I, I don't want to be a, a, a fangirl here, but. Oh, here you go. Um, Sucking up to RH again. Well, it, it's just, it, 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 it's crazy to me how many times that little things like this pop up that, you know, yeah. well, there it is. He thought about it. He know, he, you know, he made this call ahead of time, months ahead of time. Um, you know, was he getting some inside information from somebody saying, hey, this is coming. You might want to take care of this now. Possibly. Um, but still, he had the foresight to do it. Um, and now it's working perfectly. So kudos to him man it's just it's, mm -hmm. it's just testament to, to to say man we're in the we're in the right place with the with the right founder because he's looking out for people trying to save your ass he doesn't want you to have to give up your personal information why so it can just get leaked just like the ledger all, all that stuff you know all these people that have collected all your info over time how many times do you see that they've been breached or hacked and now you're part of a a, a multi lawsuit you know, uh, that says here, give you a, you know, a free credit check and um, $3 and 22 cents or something like that for getting your information stolen. He, he right. doesn't want us to be a part of that, man. He's, he's looking out for people. And once people truly understand that and see it, um, the world will be a much better place and, and Pulse Chain will definitely get even more adoption because of it. So I, I'm happy with it. I'm pleased with it. And uh, yeah, it's pretty awesome. We don't, and I don't even think it has to be that he, you know, uh, had people on the lookout for stuff like this and ears to the ground. I mean, maybe he did, but I mean, he's very abreast of what is going on with crypto regulation throughout the world, really. I mean, like you yeah. can tell, I mean, since he's been, you know, tweeting a lot about like um, regulation within the United States and helping out crypto lawyers and stuff like that, the guy knows more than your average crypto founder, it seems. So, um, yeah, I, I'm sure that that was a layup for him to know that this was potentially down the line. And it's just so funny that like within the, that documentation we just saw from the EU, they actually go out of their way to, and again, you're right, talking out of both sides of their mouth and how much do they really even understand about the industry also. But they go out of their way to specifically say that those kind, basically what we have running on Pulse Chain would be exempt. Like that actually is DeFi, you know, yeah. there's no centralized front end, you know, um, it's awesome. And it just makes me like more happy to be in, even be involved in it. And again, people could talk about like, and again, these are only people already within the Pulse Chain ecosystem, but people talk about like the complexities of like, oh, nobody's going to want to do that. They're not going to download a program and do this and do that. I mean, at the point that you already are willing to even get into DeFi, you're a bit of a freak. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you're a little bit of, you, you know, you're, you're interested weird. in it. You're a little weird. You're, you're like all of us, you know, you're really wanting to be in this industry. Retail are people who is like, oh, yeah, I bought Ethereum and staked it on Coinbase or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. those people have no idea. Like, they're not going to. Yeah. Like, they're, they're like, oh, yeah, or Robin. They're like, oh, yeah, well, I know what the idea of a wallet is, but I, I kind of have one, but I don't really understand it. Like, they literally don't even have a wallet. So if you're at the point that you're like, even if you're de not dealing with Pulse Chain, even if you're in like AVAX or Phantom or Matic or whatever, Polygon, you have at least taken another step you know, Solana to get into a new network and be doing stuff in DeFi. So I think once you've gone that far, you know, what do they say? Once you go, well, I won't go down that road, but, uh, you know, once you go that far, I mean, I, I think that you're willing to keep going basically. And no coming back. Drug. Something yeah, like gateway, that. Right. The gateway drug of DeFi basically. So, um, yeah, basically, uh, I guess pulse changed the heroin. I don't, I don't really know what you would call that, but in a good way. Um, yeah. but yeah, so, um, good cool. stuff. Do you yeah. have any final thoughts on that topic? I, I, I love that. I, you know, we've just kind of seen that no. over the last couple of days. It's great though. Yeah. It just gives me more confidence in the choice that I've made to, to be a part of this, to part, part of this ecosystem. And yeah, uh, again, it's just re very reassuring to see something like that come out. Be like, there you go. <laughs> We're already I covered. totally agree. Yeah. Totally agree. Yeah, we're already there. We don't have to worry about anything. So, yeah. Um, shout out to all you guys Vanilla the Hexican, Brownies, Midlife Adventure, Marco. Um, some interesting names in here tonight. Shout out you guys. Hit the like if you're enjoying the stream so far. We appreciate you being here. Um, let's hop into Tang Gang. So, we just saw Marco talk about he's loaded up on a Tropa. 
I, one thing I noticed with Marco, okay, he clearly heavily invested in Icosa a few months back. And all our chat was Icosa, 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 I remember one night. Now, he may have uncomfortably uh, invested in a Tropa, maybe p and Teddy Bear. More power to him, I own them all. Um, but yeah, uh, shout out to you, Marco. I'm glad you're involved. Let's get into the Tang Gang stuff here. So um, there's a lot of angles to cover here. So if you're not, I'm not going to do the whole history of the Tang Gang, but basically uh, HOA, Hex, Orange Address was basically the first token of the Tang Gang. Okay. Too Spooky is not like the Tang Gang, but he's the guy on Twitter that is, you know, he's created the bulk of the tokens within the Tang Gang on Paul's chain, uh, you know, Peach, Nanana, whatever else, um, PPAP, all, all these, you know, fruit, rat, whatever else. Um, and if I misspeak on any of this for any Tang Gang, you know, super fans, correct me, please. But too spooky, um, you know, got Orange Gooey. I think he's like the, the main guy that kind of started it all. I don't know. Um, but too spooky seems to be very active on Twitter and I, I, he's a really good follow. But he just launched another token, Peach, the other night. Uh, I believe Ewok and I both degened, uh, unless you didn't want me to tell them that you did, Ewok. Um, I already did. Uh, so I, <laughs> um, I, I'm curious what your thoughts are as we see another token come out from the Tang Gang. I have been avidly watching and following. Uh, Hex Tangent made this beautiful Tang Gang Sharks um, Excel sheet that shows you like how much it takes to be a shark. It has all the tokens that are official Tang Gang tokens so people don't get scammed if there's somebody that pretends they're affiliated with the Tang Gang and they're really not. Um, it has all kinds of uh, quantitative stuff about it, what the memes mean and things like that. It just it, It's fantastic. Like a whole sure, sheet. Me, I'll put it up. I will. I will. Yeah, it's very, very um, uh, comprehensive of everything they have going on. And uh, again, I think it's a good safety thing for people to have to know um, that they're really dealing with the Tang Gang. Um, but... So so, to so many tokens have been launched now, M many of them fruit related, basically. Um, and, and I'm wondering, you know, a lot of people are saying they, they've all performed very, very well. Like we just see that what's beautiful about them is they're all fair launched. They come out of nowhere like Peach. I think that was on Thursday or Friday night. And I like ran to my computer real quick to buy a bag on its way off as it just launched. Um, that's what happens with these. That's, I, I did the same thing with Nanana. I think this is awesome. Like, I love that they do this. It's a fair launch. It comes out of nowhere. It's unannounced usually. And then it's just all systems go. And, you know, I, I bought PPAP. I've, I've had a good five or six apps off of that so far. And, um, you know, what I want to ask is like, they have been performing so well, it would stand to reason for somebody to ask with so many tokens. I think Axis alluded to this before. Many other people would ask, you know, at what point is there some kind of a dilution effect? Like, can that happen? Will that happen to these tokens? Because right now, none of them are really showing any sign of that. Just the other day, of course, it was a Sami video. And, you know, he, he talks about something that hasn't really lifted off yet. And it will. But he talked about the Trump token, OMG, uh, Orange Man Good giant green candles all of a sudden you know i would wait for a pullback on something like that but um it, it's just insane what they're doing here and at this point I, I understand not everybody's into memes and stuff like that but um something's going on here with these guys you know i mean something clearly is going on and people have a thirst for this it doesn't matter if you don't like it anybody but they do so anyway give me your thoughts on all this ewok um because it really seems like it is turning. I mean, I have so I, I messaged you today. KDP finally is mixing it up in <laughs> memes. I never thought I would see <clears throat> today. She's talking about, oh, dick with butt uh, is better than bear or whatever. I'm like, oh, KDP is even in the memes now. So, yeah, well, what do you make of this? I'm interested to get your take. Well, I have mixed emotions, mixed feelings, obviously, coming from what I know and, and what, you know, with hex the way things kind of started out but we kind of have to obviously when you start a layer one you have to really um let your uh, you don't have to let your guard down but you have to be more open to all of these things happening right i mean right. you want the network to to grow um and and it's funny because you know, this we'll we'll talk about this maybe after this conversation, but the difference between Metcalf's law and Reed's law, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Reed's law is all these different communities that have kind of sprung up, right? You've got the Tang Gang, you've got the um B Roots group, you've got 
the um, Axis um, and, mm -hmm. and their Solid X protocol, and you've got the um, the PH guys, and you've got yep. it, it's just all of these little things that are onboarding new people even into their group before it really goes into the full group, right? It's still all pulse chain. Um, but you know, each one of these guys or each one of these groups are still responsible for their onboards too, um, until they find out the rest of this stuff. So it, it's very cool. Um, these guys have a, um, a very strong, uh, liquidity provider mentality background mm -hmm. right yeah um they want you to to buy in and then provide liquidity if you want to get out use the liquidity to get out because that way it doesn't harm the price um you know you're not going to see these crazy candles people are going to buy into your bids if you have single-sided liquidity um and it allows you to exit you can pick a price where do you want to get out um and and set it and and kind of forget it so um it, it's their stuff, their 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 teachings could definitely be used in the rest of, of the space. Um, mm -hmm. As far as not harming price, not having these huge red candles. And a lot of times you don't tend to see those. I mean, they happen occasionally. People are going to be impatient there. You know, you could even have haters that get in early just to get out and dump the price on people because they don't like them. You know, I think right. a lot of people did that to Hex. Um, in the very beginning, I think they didn't care about it. They wanted their gains. They didn't care about the price. They dumped it all at once instead of setting limit orders to get out safely and uh, without without hurting the, the price, without creating red candles, things like that. So, yeah, I, I'm impressed with them. Um, you know, I, I kind of think as much as uh, Too Spooky and Orange Gooey. Orange Gooey was, I think, one of the he, I think he's the one that kind of started a lot of this stuff. You know, he went on the, so. the spaces a lot with uh, talking about memes, right? I mean, that was their big um, push was that the memes are what gets adoption, it, especially for Twitter. Uh, when you're on mm -hmm. Twitter, the, the memes are the things that capture people's attention. Um, and that's what they've pushed along with the providing liquidity, um, so it's a little bit different um, than than others, but listen, man, we need all of them. We need all of these groups. So, you know, I, I've never had. They're a little toxic sometimes. I've 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 seen and I've heard um, people go into their Telegram and ask for help, and they kind of, you know, it, it's always the ones that are serious about asking for help. <laughs> they get kind of turned turned off by. Uh, some of the toxicity, but you know, again, you're going to have that on Twitter. It's a degen wasteland, especially, um, and you know, that's the only criticism that I that I would have of of this particular group is that you know I've heard reports of a lot of people saying that there's, there's a lot of toxicity within um, that. So for them to be, you know, hopefully, be a little bit more accepting of people that are trying to learn. Um, they get pointed in that direction and, you know, be patient with them a little bit. I know, I, I know people can be, when they're learning, it can be a pain in the ass, but um, you're only going to help improve the, the network growth and things like that when you do walk them through it a little bit. So, yeah, that's yeah. all, really. Yeah, um, and I, I want to answer Vanilla the Hexagon's um, question here, because you were kind of just alluding to this. I'll be honest with you. Totally honest. I don't pay attention to really hardly any drama on Twitter. Yeah. And if there is any with some of those guys, okay. I, I really, you know, the prices of the charts are going up and I like what they're doing in that regard. So I, I don't even know what else is going on there, but shut off another the hex and he's talking about, I was telling him Twitter is a good resource, you know, for finding out like if a new token drops or like little pieces of news like that. And, you know, he talks about, it being such a cancer and it definitely is just like Ewok just alluded to, but you know, don't follow those people or mute them. Find the people that have good info, put alerts on for them and mute everything else. Like you can use Twitter in a way that blocks out all the noise and just gets you the good stuff. Cause trust me, there, there are gems out there. And if you could just put alerts on for certain people like that, 
um, and ignore some of the other drama, then, you know, I think you'll be fine. So that's what I do. That's how I got into Peach as soon as it came out. I think Too Spooky tweeted about it. Then I saw Sami did. And, you know, it's not like I got in on the ground floor. I just knew riding that initial green candle up was probably going to be beneficial and it has so far. So, um, but yeah, well, the, the Tangang stuff, I, I did have more on the Tangang. I wanted to save that for in a minute. If you don't mind, Ewok, that's super chat because I just want to finish this point. Um, because I, I did have thoughts about fame too. Um, but what I want to ask you this, Ewok. Now, this is not financial advice. We're not telling you what to do, but we can share like our best practices and what we want to do with the Tang Gang stuff. You know, if you are somebody that's like around or quick enough to like, hey, I I, I picked up Peach and I got a five X off it, or I got PPAP last week and I got a few X's out of it. You know, what do I do? Am I just holding it throughout the duration of the bull market and hoping to make like a you know 10x on my pulse or whatever? Or what am I trying to do? Um, do I want to take profits on the way up? You know, if this doesn't really have much backing it, it's really just meme power. Do I want to take out some profits or something like that? I personally, kind of what I like to do is if I get in on one of these and I get like pretty substantial gains. Like if I get like a five X or something like that, there, you just have to figure out how you want to do it. But I get to a point where I want to de-risk a little bit. Like there may be a point where I'm like, okay, I love this. I absolutely am keeping a bag of this there. I have no intentions of selling this whole position now because it's still spring of 2024, you know, but I also see that Nanana is at a new all time high against pulse. I've made like an eight X on it at this point. I'm going to at least take out my principal or maybe like 2x my principal and I'm going to buy Pulse and Pulse X back with it. You know what I mean? I think that that is a, that's what I like to do just to de-risk a little bit and feel safe on the way up. But I still want to hold my position too. everybody's different. You can do it however you want to. If you don't want to take profits along the way, that's fine. I just think that, you know, if you're seeing some of these things run really hard against Pulse, you might feel comfortable if you go ahead and rotate some back into Pulse since it's so down against these tokens right. in the short term. So uh, that's been awesome for me. Like, uh, again, we alluded to it at the top of the show. If you're upset at the current price action and stuff like that, this is one of those things you could be doing to try to stack more Pulse, Pulse X, Hex, whatever it is you're into. So um, I, wh what do you make of that, Ewok? I, and, you know, what might some of your strategies be? Well, yeah, I mean, that's definitely a good strategy. Um, for for me, though, I usually end up buying and holding it forever until it pretty much bottoms out and goes to zero and forget <laughs> to sell along the way. Um, that's yeah. one of the reasons why I don't degen into too many things, um, because I always forget to take profits. I think, well, maybe it'll go up again. But knowing that meme coins really only last one cycle, will these be different? Because there is a different community around all of it um i don't know you know doge was a mean coin and look look at it it's been around for how many cycles and it still mm -hmm. continues to do all-time highs again um so you know it, it's going to be one of those interesting things i definitely recommend though that you do get out your principal at least um and if especially if you spent your pulse bag or pulse x bag or whatever you may have gotten out of if you have a better ratio and can take it out and still leave yourself a moon bag, um, that's going to be ideal. Obviously, you know, you don't want to hurt your, your initial bag that you had. And if you can replace it um, and still keep a moon bag. So when it does come up, you know, it's a win-win, right? So you yeah. can capture those gains later uh, when the bull market is in full force and these things are going crazy. Um and you haven't hurt the bag that you kind of risked on. So, um, yeah, I think that's ultimately the probably the best way to manage them. Yeah, I am with you there as well. Um, I wanted to say this to Marco real quick. He rode Gopher's Saul up 4X and sold it back into Pulse X. Um, lucky you, you must not have done the actual like sacrifice portion and just bought it after it totally tanked uh, <laughs> after yeah. it launched. So um, good for you anyway. Let's get um, to Fast Abdul. I mean, he threw us a ahead, super chat. We want to acknowledge it. Yep. Um, he says, get ready for uh, PH ecosystem comeback, uh, prime to fucks, pre-mint on now seven to 10 days to two and a half point five x yield so uh, apparently they're about to launch something or the pre-mint is happening right now i'm not overly familiar with it so definitely look into it well but i wanted to say thank you for I, the super chat 
Yeah, thank you for the super chat. And I wanted to say about that too. I, I actually was starting to get interest in looking into maybe getting a little bit of fame because um, that chart right now finally looks like it has stopped bottoming out. Um, yeah. It looks like it started to come up a little bit. And it's about time because it's been so long now. So yeah, it just doesn't make sense for that to be where it is. It's just starting to get really undervalued. Um, and and yeah, I like where that's at right now. So that's that's good timing. I think we will start to hear more good stuff from all the PH team stuff. Um, and particularly the fame token, I think is on a rebound right now. So yeah, and it's yeah. I mean it's it's decimated. So if you want something to you know, this way down against Pulse. I think it's probably like 80% down against Pulse oh, really? right now. I mean, it's bad. Yeah, I'll try to look it up real quick just while we're looking. But um, yeah, I'm not saying to like, you know, buy a ton or anything, but it definitely is. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it has, it's starting to trend up a little bit. But uh, yeah, let me yeah, see. He says that uh, fame is a fork of GMX. And uh, GMX exactly. is one of the things that did do well in a bear market. I do remember seeing that. So. Yeah, yeah, it's down about seventy five percent right now. Yeah, against Paul. There's so, a lot um, of things, man, that are very undervalued. Chart doesn't right look pretty, but our, I mean, it, 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 <laughs> our our whole ecosystem is way undervalued. So you know, you could probably throw a dart at just about anything at this point, um, as long as there's people building on it, and and um, there are there are people coming on board. It, 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 you're gonna you're gonna probably do okay with a lot of these things that are forks of other things that are are solid contracts um you, you know you're gonna be mm -hmm. you're gonna be quite quite well yeah i think so too so uh appreciate that fast abdul everybody look into the ph ecosystem for sure and uh look at the fame token because it does look like it's starting to rebound here so good stuff oh well, sure. and don't forget it's one of the ways to um combine liquidity right it's one of the protocols mm -hmm. where you can put five or six things into one liquidity pair um, you know, there's, there's one that is probably, I'm sure there's a Tang gang, um, pair where it may have HOA and, uh, DWB and Nana and peach and, um, all of those things. And you may put 20% of each one so that anytime any trading happens, you know, you're earning fees off of it. So, um, there's a lot of money to be made passively with, with liquidity providing. Um, and I think you can earn, uh, the the fame token right or stake it and you earn I forget how that that whole pro that whole thing works over there but there are some tokens where you just hold them and you earn fees too so um, definitely check it out there's a lot of cool stuff going on everywhere you just can't keep up with all of it unfortunately yeah yeah i totally agree there's a lot of stuff going on there DJ moonboy with a super chat too i uh, appreciate that and we just saw this from uh dudley uh you know we missed out on whoop, sorry that we missed out on ticker pulse chain uh that's another oh. one that uh has been blowing up too um yeah, it's not tank oh actually maybe it is I, I uh it is on that chart now that i might think of it um it is down at the bottom uh, external communities that lean heavily into Tangain, they do have uh, Pulse Chain listed as a token down there. So um, I don't want to confuse people by that. If there's any noobs watching or anything, that is not the actual Pulse PLS token. Uh, that is a Pulse Chain meme. Um, and basically it's been up only and I wouldn't, don't know that I'd buy it right now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, I've looked into that a little bit, so. What is it? It's a pulse chain token. Uh, if you type pulse chain into deck screener rather than pulse or PLS, um, yeah. you will see that token. Uh, and it's yeah. Peter Parker Bush did 9-11 Kirby Pepe. That's the uh, name of the token. It's ticker oh. pulse chain. Yeah. Um, now that I said that on air, we're definitely demonetized. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's just basically one straight green candle. Um, so... I would say buy at your own risk right now. Um, but kudos to any kudos to you guys who did buy when it was down low anyway. Uh, but uh, it's kind of off of the races. I'll wait for a pullback on that one and see what's going on. Um, yeah. Anyway, just looking at some of these names. Yeah. No, I'm just looking at I'm looking at this. The Tang Gang moments. names. Yeah. 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 Oh, I can help you out off the air. I've degen pretty hardcore into some of these. So there's a no, couple I'm on good. a slight pullback right now. Um, 
The thing with the Tang Gang stuff is it's like if there's a 30% pullback plus, that's when I'm like, okay, I might want to start watching this one. Whereas other coins, you're like waiting for complete death. With these, it's like 40, 50%. Like when I bought the pineapple coin, PPAP, it was 60% down. And it was one of the few fruit ones that hadn't run yet. And I got like a 7X on it in days. I mean, wow. it was insane. Yeah, and that's another problem too. And and the way I look at things too, if if I don't catch the first three big up green candles, I'm not touching it, man. And right. I think that's why uh, Dick with Butt. That's one of the ones where I, I felt the same way. And I just I was like, man, I'm like, I'm not catching it uh, because yeah. I have degened into some of them. And then you know you buy at the top, and then there's a pullback, and now you've got to wait either that or you got to buy in more, which is not really comfortable doing. I mean, granted you know, a 50% pullback where you're getting twice the amount of coins is, is, is one thing. Uh, but I really didn't want to put that much more in, right? I don't want to mm -hmm. DCA down. And so you get stuck holding a bag where it's not, is it coming back? Is it, you got to wait for how long? And, you know, so mm -hmm. just be, be very cautious of, of that. I agree Timing with you 100%. Is very important. No, I agree with you 100%. Like, it's not even that you're hating dick with butter or anything like that. It's right. just that, like, uh, it's, you know, maybe you need to go get uh, uh, tits with fadge or whatever it's called. Um, <laughs> but, you know, you you want to make sure you get a good price. That's the bottom line. So that guy yeah. shouted out Paul's chain. We have OMG, that Trump coin right now. They're all at all-time highs right now. Like, I'm not going to buy it yeah. right now. You know, yep. um, people are, but I'll wait for – there's a couple right now in the Tang Gang that I have my eye on. Um, that I might DCA to into the coming days because there are pullbacks right now. So that, yeah. that's what I would say is look for a pullback. So, yep, for sure. Um, okay. We don't have too much more time. So let's go to, I think we got to talk about nine inch, um, huge updates from Hexy bastard over the last couple of days. Um, I believe he spoke at the pulse chain conference probably, um, where he, yeah, yeah I he think did. he announced some of them there. Yeah. Um, which, you know, we'll kind of acknowledge, obviously, the, the huge Pulse Chain conference as well. Huge efforts from Matty Allen and all that stuff, which was terrific. But uh, Nine Inch with some big time updates here. So we've got V3 on Nine Inch has launched. Uh, Hexy Bastard was kind of away for a while. Now he's back. Just started a round of interviews. I just saw him on with Corey Costa a little bit earlier today. Um, but they launched V3 Liquidity. Um, as well as stable swaps, which will also allow for yield on stable coins, which people are always, you know, after in the bear market, um, you know, different LPing and things like that. Uh, you told me they already had this feature, but um, earlier I heard Hexy Bastard say this to Corey Costa, that the auto DCA method that they have is, is his favorite thing that they're doing right now. Basically that you can set an auto DCA into a token with all these different types of intervals, whether it be like per block or what, however you want to do it, like amount, like there's basically all these parameters and dials that you can tweak for how you want a DCA to occur, which obviously helps you with slippage and things like that. Um, so just terrific updates by these guys. Um, and it's cool to see him working so hard. You know, I, I will say straight up and I know I'm not the only one, like I, uh, I, I think I judged him stupidly off of a couple of fairly inebriated streams he was on um, where I, you know, hadn't seen much more of him. But seeing him speak today and at the Pulse Chain Conference and stuff like that, I mean, the guy has a good head on his shoulders, very smart, um, knows what's going on with this and, and is d unbelievably driven. So, um, yep. yeah, kudos to him. And yeah, Nine Inch, basically the second biggest decks behind uh, Pulse X right now. So what do you make of some of these updates? What What are your experiences or feelings about nine inch? And then I, I have a couple follow-ups here for you about that. Yeah. Um, lots of stuff, man. These guys are building like crazy. I know a lot of people gave him grief um, about because he had a sacrifice. Um, mm -hmm. And there were a lot of people that were upset and pissed off that he didn't provide a bunch of liquidity and he didn't do a whole bunch of other things. You know, when they sacrifice their money, they forget what it means. So all these people thought they had a right or expected him to do something. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it turns out he's been building. Um, right. Uh, he also, per I, I don't know. Did you hear about the lowest of stakes? The movie? Yes. I still didn't watch it, but <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't I, watched I, it I love either. The, I, I love the idea. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, just stuff like that. He's marketing, you know, he's mm -hmm. doing things, he's building. He's obviously, I don't think he's a dev, but he's hired devs. Um, he Maybe he is himself. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't think so. But 
Um, either way, this is that DCA. Um, it's called Inch by Inch. Mm. So it's a pretty cool platform. Just where, the tip. Yep, yeah, just the tip. It says, I, I want to allocate this token to buy this token every, and you can change this to every one day, every two days. You can do every block. Uh, you can do every two days if you want um over that's my token right there i guess the bro boy crypto token bbc yeah okay. bbc Thanks. yeah um so that is their token on on yeah. nine inch as well and i believe that um as well is their fee token um so that's another good one out there but yeah mm -hmm. so i want to allocate pulse to buy bbc every two days over 12 orders so that will cover basically 24 days um and it's cool. It will just dollar cost in at whatever uh, time each, every two days. Um, it's a pretty cool tool, man. That will give you a nice average play. Um, mm -hmm. You might catch some dips. You might buy some higher um, if you want to do that. But, you know, I like to have a little bit more control. But for people that may be going on vacation and say, hey, I'm going to allocate some, let's DCA over the next two weeks until I get back. Um, and hopefully I catch some good prices. Cool way, you know. So, yeah. you know, there's that. There's the um there's all kind of tools. He can there's a deploy uh where you can deploy that. I know um GoPulse has that as well. Uh there's staking, there's farms, there's all kind of uh cool pairs where they have and some decent, you know, look at this, uh a nine inch die pair is earning 165 percent on your on wow. your farms so there are some definitely good ones if you're if you're up for that kind of um you know risk yeah there's the, a little risky, the, but, yeah. the pls plsx pair that you and i both like um you're getting 12.6 uh, apr over here and i believe you're earning the nine inch token so you know whereas on the on pulse x you are earning the incentive token so you know just a little bit different uh but yeah there's a lot of cool pairs you can pair hex and ehex too i believe uh you know here's that pair you used to be able to do that on pulse x you used to be able to and you and you got profit for it. i think they're still on the v3 level of you can you can do it and you just get the fees uh but this one you earn bbc and fees so you know, check it out if you're if you're a, um, a, a liquidity provider type person and want to to play around with some of these. Uh, just again, be careful of the of the loss, uh, the impermanent loss feature. But um, you know, stay on top of it. And yeah, this is pretty cool. I'm, I'm impressed by all the stuff that they've done and uh, continuously doing. Kudos to him. I totally agree. Yeah. Um, and I'm excited to see his stretch of interviews that he says he's going to be doing over the coming weeks for sure. I want to ask you this because um, I think I don't know if I heard it in his actual interview with Corey today, but, um, you know, people are asking like, OK, why are we getting not that they don't want these, but hey, we're getting why is it so easy for Nine Inch to like implement all these changes, you know, implement all these things that we've wanted PulseX to have and they're just doing it easily. And it's here and they're doing it and it's fine and we love it. But why doesn't PulseX have anything like this? Why doesn't PulseX have single side? Why does PulseX basically have nothing that all these people have wanted is, is what they're saying, basically, other than the buy and burn already in there, which, you know, no other decks really utilizes in crypto. Right. Um, and people have been saying that. And Hexy Bastard on that interview today had some good takes. And I, I agreed with him where it's like, in my opinion, well, number one, um, they're more larger full-scale changes that PulseX would have to make. But the bigger point to me is also that I think it's 100% intentional that PulseX has not put any of them out yet. I think it's purely a marketing thing. Yep. I think that it's like, you know, we're waiting for uber bullish times to come. ETH, new all-time highs, ETH ETF approval. All of a sudden, oh, what do you know? PulseX has single-sided staking or limit orders or whatever. And, you know, the green candles resulting from that news are there and they're sustainable rather than some of these limp ones that we had back in March that have basically evaporated already. Yep. You know? Yeah. My um, personal opinion is that those things will get launched um, when we are in the start of the stride, I think, of the bull market. 
uh, when things really start to take off. It's going to be one of the initiators for that. <laughs> um, you start to see these features come up and look out. Um, I think that probably means that the non-believers are out finally. Uh, mm -hmm. Why would you want to reward these people that don't believe, right? I, I, right. I think that's part of it. And I agree, I agree with you 100% that it's totally intentional. I'm not releasing all these features for all these ungrateful MFs. You know what I mean? I yeah. why would yeah. Why would I do that? Why would I reward them and give them something when I know they're this close to selling their bags and leaving? Uh, right. Because they don't believe in what we're doing here. So completely agree. Um, I, I think he, it's all marketing, and I think he's waiting um, uh, until the right time. So, yeah. Yeah. I think so, too. I would be doing the same thing. Um, and something Hexy Bastard said today, which makes a lot of sense, too, is like, he also, you know, is in tune and they're in tune with everything that's going on with the market right now. I think the phrase he used was that they're in the trenches and he knows exactly what people want right now. And, you know, there may be a lot less to lose for him and that team for launching certain things right now if it isn't like the most green candle, you know, friendly environment at the moment. Whereas for Paul Sachs, you really want to kind of more so capitalize on that because there's a, a lot more money already sitting in Paul Sachs. I mean, the whole reason that it's performed the way it has over the last year is because of how much money was already in there. So, um, right. yeah, I think it's just easier, not that it's easy, but I think it's easier to make the decision if you're nine inch to implement some of that stuff right now. Whereas Paul Sachs, you have to be a little bit more careful with, you know, the leverage that you're putting on those kind of announcements. So completely agree. Do you have any other final thoughts on nine inch? I mean, super bullish overall and awesome to see them doing so well. No, no other thoughts. I'm trying to get my camera to focus. Okay. No problem. Um, well, why don't we round out on this and I'm going to let you totally take this and I don't want to get way too in the weeds on it because I, I want to, I do want to wrap up here shortly, but, um, we, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about this iBurn thing. Um, I saw somebody already mentioning GIF, the Gifford token, which I am not uh, as much familiar with right now, full disclosure. Uh, but it launches for Icosa Hedron. Um, what does this mechanism actually do, I guess? And uh, what is the GIF token? What is Gifford, this, this token that comes along with it? Because, uh, again, I've kind of had... A little bit more tunnel vision the last few days, and I'm hoping you have some more insight to Addy Walk. I've have heard some people talking about it, um, but it seems to be something built for Icosa that uh, should help it. But I also see some people wondering why it was built for Icosa. So, um, nope, I don't know if you heard everything that I just said. Or yeah, I heard you. I heard you. I'm just still playing <laughs> with my my camera. So Gifford is the guy, I believe, um, that that kind of created this stuff. There we go. Finally back in focus, um, yeah. and. So I'm I'm not overly certain the percentages of how it works. Um, it, it's meant to create parity between chains, um, mm -hmm. right? And then this one, this iBurn, is specifically for Icosa. Um, not exactly sure. You you mint you use Icosa to mint the the gift gift or i think or maybe the uh, i'm not sure exactly what you get but a percentage of that pulse chain or or whatever then um does get bought back in to the particular token and then it burns it so um it's a it's basically another buy and burn functionality that will use arbitrage opportunity to bring things to to parity um and i was like well does this work with anything like why mm -hmm. wouldn't we do this with x <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean it, it it makes sense to do that and they didn't really answer my question um so i, I saw it on um um i don't remember if it was the f and hangout on friday night when they were talking about it um i, I know rg3 has something to do with it i know crypto kool-aid has something to do with it um, those guys were the, you know, in instrumental in, in the marketing portion of it. Um, but yeah, um, Icosa now is very close. In fact, let's take a little look-see here on, um, the two different chains. Let me share my, 
<clears throat> Icosa, and I will say for Icosa's sake, I mean, those two have been, I think, tighter than most um, to parity on both chains, actually. Well, and it's kind of stayed time. that way, right? Um, yeah. Over time, like it didn't didn't go too far apart. So Icosa on Pulse Chain is 13 cents. Looks like uh, just below 13 cents on Ethereum, actually. 13.4 on, on Pulse Chain, yeah. And then I thought I thought I had Icosa on here too, but I guess not. Let's just look. Oop. I'm seeing like 12.6 cents. Why did that do that? I must have hit the ad. Um, or 12 you're seeing cents, what? Depending on where you look. It, uh, right about 12 cents. I mean, it, it's yeah. fairly so, so we're looking at 13.4. Uh, seven on Pulse Chain and eleven point nine eight, almost twelve cents on Ethereum, and yeah. that's V two. But yeah, I mean they're within what a penny, a penny and a half at at thirteen cents. Right. So you know they're closing in together, pretty pretty cool. So um, yeah, I mean if that's what the protocol is doing, and then that the gift token itself is what's getting bought essentially. And not sold. So, I mean, you know, that's the game theory behind that one is any token that gets bought and not sold, <laughs> that's mm -hmm. kind of what your outcome is, right? It's a straight up candle, um, right? essentially. So, but I feel like there's going to have to be some some selling pressure here at some point. So, I, I again, I don't know a whole lot about the mechanics of it, but I do know, like I said, that's, that's kind of how it works, right? It takes the... It takes what you put in, and then it takes a percentage of it, buys and burns um, part of the supply so that it will in itself help with the arbitrage uh, of getting them to parity. So enough volume yeah. will will do that. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's fantastic. And I, I, of Icosa Hedron, I mean, Icosa is the more scarce one to begin with also. I mean, it's kind of the hotter commodity. Yeah. Um, and I've definitely acquired some on both chains over the last couple of months. So definitely bullish to see this. You know, it would be not. I don't know if and when Alex McWhorter will update on any of the things that he's working on. But, I mean, we, right. we know that he's working on more cross-chain stuff for Icosa Hedron, where the basically one token, which will be Icosa Hedron, will be created. And you will have, right. I think you said, like a 30-day window where you can send in your um, current tokens from either chain to basically get that. So yeah, the I don't want to. version, yep. Right. And I don't want to go too far with that and say any, you know, total specifics because who knows, it may change a bit by the time he actually does come out with that. Right. Um, right. And he's been but, quiet. Like we haven't heard yeah. much from Alex and when Alex is quiet, he's working. Um, Definitely. So I don't know how this will affect that. What he's doing, I would assume that these guys have at least reached out to him. I would hope so anyway. Mm -hmm. And said, listen, this is our plan. We know, you know, Alex is a cool dude. He's done a lot for the community. Um, very selfless. You know what I mean? He, he's mm -hmm. put out things that are um, locked contracts, no middlemen um, that work and just work. You know, so uh, I would hope that these guys have had reached out to him before that they launched it. Um, hopefully it doesn't interfere with any of the plans or he doesn't have to rewrite something now yet again because things have changed, right? Um, right. You know, uh, so, yeah, just thinking out loud, I guess. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm totally with you. We know Alex is definitely working and uh, definitely not shaving. So um, his beard anyway. I don't know about anywhere else. But, uh, yeah, kudos to him. We're definitely looking forward to all that. Um, yeah, so good stuff from I Burn there. Uh, we got a peach fan in the house. There we go. Uh, just hit another new all-time high. It looks like so. Yeah, fast um, up bills that they have in Alex. Go. Like, so good stuff. Cool. Appreciate that, man. Um, all right, let's let's just wrap up talking about real quick. Just uh, Pulse Conference so far because I have somebody uh, calling for my attention here a little bit. Um, so Pulse Con, uh, you know, Matty Allen. We can't ever say enough with how much he provides his community. I know some people recently were like, oh, you know, he launched a token and there's a sacrifice phase and I have a problem. I mean, whatever. I mean, like he basically has carte blanche at this point with how much he's done, um, yeah. you know, for free, a lot of it to, uh, you know, and take time out of his own life, out of his own days, setting up and organizing these conferences of all these terrific speakers. Um, 
you know, you and I even talked about like maybe we both didn't watch as much of it as we traditionally would, not for any reason other than like we we, we know all <laughs> these people. Well, yeah, that too, busy, but also like we know these people. We're, mm-hmm. we're kind of in the community, and I, I think it's more of a spectacle for other communities to see. I mean, that's what yeah. we want to be doing is showing like look what we have going on here. Look at this conference that runs like every year without fail. How many other people can say this? Um, and I, I did see some great segments. I saw like a uh, money gang with big Krakowski and mm-hmm. uh, David Fader, which was a really good one, whichever one Frank Molina was on. We're obviously very familiar with Frank and that one was terrific. I mean, yep. so many good people. I saw access on there. I mean, like, yeah, I mean, a, a lot of great conversations. So um, really just overall, like, another reason that i'm so pumped to be part of the community and feel like we're in the absolute right place because the thing that people forget is the community is what you want in crypto not necessarily the tech even if the tech is good and even if we are as decentralized you know more than anybody else like we talked about at the top of the show the community is just crazy so what were your thoughts on that yeah man you can fork the code but you can't fork a community and it, it it just goes to show the amount of work that that maddie puts in every year and it's not just the pulse conference he does the hex conference too so he's doing this like twice a year um thanklessly i mean there are so many people out there that i tell you what if if people that have bad things to say about maddie um they probably have some of their own issues man i i just I, i how do you find bad things to say about this guy? Because he's always doing things selflessly. You know, he's not making anything. In fact, um, I forget whether it was Liquid Loans or, or one of the sponsors of, of this year's thing. They put ten grand up um, into a pool, and Maddie said, "Hey, if you were a speaker, come claim your share of the money that was donated. I'm giving it to all the speakers that spoke this year." I mean, who does that, right? right. I, it, it's just the things that he does for for this community. Um, shout out to him, Matty Golf Clap. Uh, you, you know, I appreciate you. Um, a lot of people appreciate you, and you know, just fade the haters. Um, but yeah, job well done. It went off again without a hitch, and yeah, uh, yeah, kudos to him. Yeah, I mean, I saw some of the speakers as well. I did catch. I forgot about Frank's. I, I caught that. Um, I I missed the David Feeder and um, Kirkowski one. I wish I could have seen that. Uh, I haven't seen Feeder really much lately. In That's fact, why I enjoyed it. Yeah. I yeah. I haven't really. spoke. I spoke to, like, I met him at the conference. We hung out quite a bit uh, yeah. when I was in Vegas and, and talked with David's a very cool guy, down to earth dude. Definitely. Um, yeah. So. Wish I would have caught that, but I, again, I know it's mostly for a lot of people who want to find out more about the um, about the community and, and things like that. But yeah, just a awesome. And, and again, thanks again. That's thank you probably isn't enough, but you know he does a great job every year. Amen to that. Yeah, really glad to be part of this community and um, awesome that Maddie does all that work. So uh, yeah, probably go back and watch some replays of that um, of some stuff I didn't catch. Uh, looks like you got somebody calling you as well. So um, yeah, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. We appreciate all you guys being here. Evor, yeah, ETH is going to pump soon. Don't worry about it. Claudia, Vanilla the Hexican, KD, Fast Abdul, appreciate the super chat and all your kind words. Boppy, uh, C Hex, my pulse, Team RH. Uh, KD, Ten Top, of course, DJ and Moon Boy. All you guys really appreciate you being here tonight. We do this every Wednesday at 6.30 Eastern uh, PM every Wednesday. I already said that part. Um, but yeah, like the video if you enjoy Real DeFi and this channel. We appreciate you all supporting us. So we will see you next week right here. I am Broke Boy Crypto. So for Crypto Ewok, we'll catch you next week right here on the Creed of Crypto live stream. We'll see you guys. <laughs>